how much, like just tell us, give us a sneak peek into how much you earn as a software engineer. As a software contractor, I make uh, $6.50 uh, a day on the contracts that I work on. So that works out around fourteen to 16000 um, a month. In combined, it's getting close to 30000 a month. You need a degree to become a software engineer. Now the short answer is no, you don't need a degree. Please tell us the practical steps to take to become a software programmer because I'm really interested. Oh, so the practical steps I would, I would say is basically Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tochi. If you're seeing me for the first time, you're very much welcome. And to my returning subscribers, you guys are welcome back. So guys, today I have somebody here and he'll be sharing with you guys something very important. And I just want to, you know, put it out there that he is a software engineer. He's doing very well, earning so much money, guys. You guys don't want to know how much he earns on a daily basis. And he's going to be sharing with you guys everything you need to know about IT. I've talked a lot about IT in on this channel. I've invited some people to talk about IT. And this is yet another time for you guys. So if you don't have a computer science background, if you don't have any IT or any computer background, don't worry. Even if you don't have a degree, don't worry. Because this person here don't even have a BSc, but today he's earning so much money. Okay, so let me just not talk too much. Let me just let him introduce himself. Uh, thank you so much, Tochi, for having me. Um, my name is Kingsley Jama. I am a software engineer, software developer. Um, I write code um, for a living. Yeah. And uh, on the side, I really enjoy teaching people uh, who want to learn how to code, uh, just giving back um, from my, my own experience. So you're welcome to our channel. I'm sure that we all would learn a lot from you today. So guys, please just sit back and relax while we do this thing, okay? I'm sure you'll be glad that you watched this video today. Okay, so quickly, can you please explain to us what you do as a software engineer? Okay, so as a software engineer, I basically take people's ideas. So people, uh, practically everybody that you know has some type of idea. And any business idea people have these days comes down to uh, building some type of digital product. Okay, so that's where I come in. So somebody come and say, okay, I have this idea. Uh, it's like an Uber type idea. Okay, um, you know, like if I, if I have a parking space which is free and I live in the city of London, I want to be able to rent my parking space to another business, another you know, a driver to use my space. Then I would come up and. Uh, write the code that would fulfill that business objective. Now, I don't work with individuals like a freelancing, I work for companies. So if a company uh, needs an expert to come in, they will hire uh, a contractor and a contractor will come in and write code for that company. So, but the problem is when people think about coding, it, you don't have a reference point. You immediately think, you know, it has to be for a specific type of people, always in front of a computer screen, have no kind of life besides coding. And that is generally a myth. Uh, programming pays a lot of money and it belongs to everybody, all colors, all genders, everybody. So that's why I'm here to show you the ways that, the way I did it and the way that you can do it as well. All right, so thank you. And uh, please, how, you know, did you go into it? Because you're here to tell us how you did it and how we can do it too. So how did this begin? Tell us how you started it. Okay, so I, I grew up in, in Lagos, in Nigeria. Uh, I was in a boarding school in a, a school called King's College. And um, back then, 96, uh, we all moved to, to the United Kingdom with my family. Um, in school back home, there was only one computer in the entire college. The entire college had one computer. And they would let us go and see the computer. So we'd say, okay, this is a mouse. This is a keyboard. This is hardware. And that wasn't enough for me. So when we moved to the United Kingdom, uh, 96, I went into the first school that we went to and I was blown away. They had computers everywhere on the screen in the, in the, in the room. 
and I did every assignment on the computer. I typed out everything because I just wanted to learn and learn more about, about computers. One of the teachers saw my enthusiasm for this machine and then he started coaching me, started teaching me about computers, uh, telling me about programs, these things that you can run, you can write this code and then you can run it over and over again called macros. And, and that was basically the beginning. Somebody showed me something that existed. But I had no idea that you can actually make money from, from coding. Fast forward a few years, I got to college uh, in East London, Walthamstow. And one of the lecturers, one, we're going through a particular phase where they advise you on what to do for a career in the future. And I was just, I didn't know what my, my career was going to be. As a baby, I had polio. So I had to use crutches and wheelchair. And all my friends were basically going to be working in top shop, you know, doing some, uh, you know, jobs that required moving things, carrying things in the checkout, in the supermarket and the rest of it. I wasn't sure what my future was going to be. So I went, I think I was having like a mini uh, breakdown. And I was out with my lecturer and I said, okay, listen, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. What, am I, what kind of job am I going to do? Um, you know, it's going to be the typical uh, going for the top accountancy jobs, being a lawyer, trying to go for those type of roles. But during the gap year, during the, the break that we have before between college and university, I'm not going to get one of those jobs. I just want a temp job, summer job, you know? And then he said, he told me about his son. Uh, his son worked for uh, IBM as a computer programmer. And he told me back then that his son was making 60,000, 70,000 a year. And I was like, what, well, doing what? He said, well, he's a computer programmer. He writes code. And then I, that took me back, you know, to the teachers I had in school that were basically showing me computers and writing macros, repetitive things. You could write code one time, you could run it over and over again. And then that became my, my hook. So I, I could see uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. So that was my beginning into, into computing. That same uh, lecturer, got me some books, told me about some things that I needed, software that I required to learn. Back then we had something called Dreamweaver and uh, front page. This was the software that we used for writing code. And I started writing code, reading books uh, like HTML for dummies, CSS for dummies, or programming languages for dummies, um, which meant basically they were very, very basic. And my future in programming was basically born at that point. Well, I'm sure somebody is getting something already because most of us learned computer in primary school secondary school and all that but we just stopped at that right it's just amazing how much money people make by just doing the same thing we all learned but maybe in a professional setting so it's, 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 it's your story is quite inspiring so what are the top things that you would say make you successful at the things that you do well I think one, of course, experience. <clears throat> so when I started learning to code, we didn't have the Facebooks, we didn't have the mobile apps. So I think it was uh, a very good decision to start when I started because then the world opened up and all of a sudden we are going through a stage of digitizing our entire lives, which means that it's unlimited jobs in IT. So the things that I definitely do is keeping my eyes um, on things that are important. Um, reading, constantly updating my skills is very important. Um, being very much aware about marketing, uh, reading books about marketing. But more imp most importantly is I just take action. Um, anybody who's watching this who's thinking, um, oh, oh, I've always thought about, you know, learning uh, a skill in demand or learning IT. Um, the best thing you can do is to take action is basically do something about that uh, information that you've had. Um, a, a very good place to start. I don't, I'm not sure if you, if you want to ask me a question about how to get started, but a good place to start is to look at the job market. What's in demand? What are people actually looking for? And then reverse engineer and learn those things first. So, so those, are, those are some of the points. All right. So what skills do you need to become a software engineer for somebody watching this right now? Yeah. What are the so, skills here? 
Yeah. So the when, when so there's so many different levels of software engineering. So some people are building mobile apps, some people are building web apps. They have some people who are who design wireframes, and there's some people who code in different languages. So the skills, the very basic skills that everybody kind of needs, if you're going web app development route, is you need HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML is what we use to design the structure of any web app that you see. CSS is what you use to make it look good, changing the colors, repositioning things, and JavaScript essentially brings it to life. Uh, when you click on things, have animations, they have interaction, etc. And then uh, after you've learned that, then you can begin to learn maybe a backend language, um, something like Ruby, Python, uh, JavaScript now works on backend using Node, um, etc. Um, and then from there, you can learn a database, uh, MySQL, the different types of databases to learn. So in software development world, you have uh, front-end developers, you have back-end developers, and then you have full stack. So front-end are people who learn things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So they, they primarily focus on the things that you can see. The back-end developers focus on back-end programming language, like the Pythons, like the Rubies, like the um, C++, the, the Javas, etc. And they focus on uh, when somebody fill in it forms, they click on submit, that needs to go to a database somewhere. So those are the things that a backend developer learns. A full stack uh, developer, which is what I am, we, we cover everything from front end all the way to back end. But when you start learning to code, it's always advisable to start from somewhere. So front end is a good entry level and then as time progresses, then you can begin to add more onto the stack. And, and to make money from uh, development, writing the code, you don't have to wait until you are a full stack. So you can make money just uh, designing. So that's what you do, UI, UX design. That's what you focus on, you make money there. And then gradually you can top up that skill to include writing HTML and CSS. And then you're now making money from your designing, you're converting design into code. And then you can extend that to include uh, frameworks like Node and Ruby on Rails and Django, and those are backend things. Yeah, interesting. So now to a very important question, do you need a degree to become a software engineer? Now the short answer is no, you don't need a degree uh, to be a software engineer. And degree does help to have foundation, uh, but because the nature of IT and technology is that it's constantly changing and university by its nature kind of stays the same. So in universities, they teach you the foundations, things that don't change, right? The definitions, uh, the theoretical aspects of things. But in the real world, um, big companies like the like Facebook came up, came up with something called React. Um, once that's out in the market, then we have to learn it very quickly. But universities won't be able to teach you those things that are constantly being produced and being consumed by the industry. That's why when you apply for a job, the most valuable thing that you have is your portfolio, the things that you've built. If you can come to me and say, okay, look, I have these five apps that I've built. There's no way that I will look at those apps and say, oh, do you know what? Oh, I wish you had a degree. Because what does degree tell me? Degree tells me that you now know what something is, a definition, you know the background, you know the, uh, the pluses and negatives of something. What practical tells me is that you also know those things and you've also produced something with it. You're not just talks, you've done some action as well. So, so that's the reason why uh, practical is, has a, a lot more weight than just um, a degree. All right, so you've made it clear to us that you don't need a degree to start up a career as a software engineer, right? So tell us, how did you become a software engineer? How do you do that without a degree? Or how did you become a software engineer without a degree? So, you know, fast forwarding back from when I was introduced to it by some very specific key role models in my life, I then had to take action on my own. And a few opportunities came my way, which I took. Um, there was a point when 
I I was living in North London in a place called Palmer's Green, and I had to uh, to go and uh, either pay rent or something at the estate agent somewhere. And when I was walking into the estate agents, I saw, looked up and had the name of the estate agent there and the web uh, website. I just basically spoke to uh, the owner of the company and I said, you know, do you have uh, a website? And he said, oh no, the person who built my website, you know, he has moved and he started telling me all the problems that they have in that, that company that he wishes somebody would do for him. That was the beginning. So I went back home and I made a list of all those things that he told me he wanted um, and I started building it. I already had a little bit of coding knowledge. I bought more books and I started literally solving his problems for him. He was an estate agent. He wanted a way of tracking when rent is due. He wanted a way of tracking when the maintenance in the property I needed fixing. And I wrote the code for him and he paid me uh, a few thousands to, to have the software. And then the genius part was when he mentioned, he said to me, so how much is maintenance? And, you know, I was like, oh, 350 or 300 pounds a month. And that was it. So after building that, I got paid. And then he told me about a friend of his who has a construction business. And he said, he also needs a website. He's richer than me. You should charge him double. So I charged his friend who owns a business and I made him, I, I literally copied exactly the same code that I made for, for him, duplicated it and charged this guy um, 8,000 or I can't remember exactly how much it was back then. And he paid me and then he also pays me every month a maintenance fee. So between those two, I had about 700 pounds a month just to maintain the site, which essentially means if something goes wrong, they will send me an email and I'll fix it. And, and then that was it. I went to other estate agents and I started selling exactly the same thing. And that was the beginning. The beginning was essentially finding a problem in the market, creating a solution to that, that problem, scaling the solution up. And then the money just came in from that. Wow. So now that you've talked about money, are you happy to tell us, cause I'm interested and I'm sure everybody watching this video is interested as well. How much, like just tell us, give us a sneak peek into how much you earn as a software engineer. Okay, so today I work as a contractor and I like talking about money because in, especially in the UK, we don't talk about money. It's always looked at something, you know, it's my business, not your business. But as a software contractor, I make uh, 650 uh, a day on the contracts that I work on. I also have uh, my own, so that works out around 14 to 16,000 um, a month. I also have um, other things that I have, such as these products that I've told you, the digital products. So in combined, it's getting close to 30,000 a month. So guys, like, I don't know, but if you're not inspired, I am already. Money is a big inspiration. This is somebody making in a month what people make in a year. 650 pounds a day. Wow. People make this money in a month. Yeah. And, um, and people even do, you know, some people do more than one contract. So because you're doing one contract doesn't mean that's it. You can also have two. Uh, you can split. Of course, that means you're doing working day and night. But that's always good for people who want to put down a huge amount for a deposit in a house, for example. So the 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 the, the limit is literally uh, there's no limit. Essentially, um, you make a lot of money through contracting. You build your own digital products that you can scale. Uh, if you can uh, focus on one industry, let's imagine you want to build apps for people who are in the yoga uh, industry. You just focus there. You find one problem and you solve it over and over and over again for different people. And you're charging on a monthly basis the same amount. That's pretty much what IT comes down to. There's no degree. Nobody, uh, if you approach 10, 15 different uh, yoga instructors and say, okay, I've got this platform that you can use. You can upload your classes and people can pay you to, to use the class. In exchange, every month you pay me 450 pounds. That's one yoga instructor. If you get 10 yoga instructors using your platform that you wrote yourself, okay, 
the same code. You don't have to rewrite anything. You can change colors and give them ability to upload their own logo in place. Then you have business going. Immediately it goes from uh, 400 pounds from one person, 10 people, that uh, becomes uh, 4,000 pounds a month, just from one thing. And then over years and years, you, you build more digital products. So it's, it's super, it sounds oversimplified and too true, uh, you know, uh, to be real, but it actually is. And that's, that's the industry that we, we live in today. Wow, thank you. I'm definitely going into IT. So please tell us the practical steps to take to become a software programmer, because I'm really interested. <laughs> so, so the practical steps, I would, I would say, is basically uh, go to job sites. Literally, you can do it right now. You can just go to job sites. If you're in the UK, there's a website called jobsite.co.uk uh, and search uh, software developer uh, or uh, JavaScript developer, React. Python developer, uh, contractor, keywords like that, just to see for yourself exactly what I've just said. You see 700 pounds a day, 800 pounds a day um, are on there. Look at what they're asking for, what skills they're asking for. That's what you want to learn. Now, as part of my digital product portfolio, I have an online education platform. It's called LMS, Learning Management Systems. Um, my platform is called Code Hunts. And on there, I have basically uh, reverse engineered the process that I, uh, the, the tools and the languages that I've learned over the years, which I use at work. And I use that to teach uh, people. So I record videos, and in the videos, I explain step by step um, what to do. And then I, I set assignments for you. And then I set quizzes at the end so you can make sure that you are learning the right things. And then from there, um, we have two days a week, uh, Zoom sessions, Mondays and Thursdays, where students come together just to have that uh, accountability. Because one thing I've noticed is trying to learn to code is, is a very good intention, but very few people actually start and finish what they've started. So having that accountability where you have to show up twice a week keeps the, the, the dream going. And it takes on average six months to learn if you can put in one hour every day, five days a week. So, so those are the, the, what you need to be doing essentially. All right. So for beginners like me, cause I'm really interested, how can someone start? How can we begin? Like we want to, go into IT, we want to become software programmers, how do we begin? Where do we start from? Go to codehands.co.uk. Uh, you can book uh, an appointment and I will, I will talk you through um, the courses that I have created for you. But if you want to check out some things on your own, just, just to see what things are, look into uh, HTML and CSS first. So those are the, the building blocks of anything web. Okay, so that's HTML and CSS. Uh, those are the building block of everything that you see on the internet today, Ev absolutely everything. So if you look at Facebook, look at Twitter, all of them are built with HTML and CSS as the, as the foundation. Once you've learned that, then you can learn uh, something like JavaScript, which is a programming language. Um, but as you're doing these things, the very, the, the instruction that you must have is to know uh, a product that you're passionate about, something that you want to build. It's like somebody saying, I want to become, go into the construction business, but you, you don't know what you want to build. That, that's the very difficult thing to have. So again, in my course, I take away all that second so guessing and we actually give you projects to work on to build from scratch. So guys, you heard from the horse's mouth um, Kingsley, I must say that you're doing really well for yourself, like you're an inspiration. I'm really inspired and I'm sure somebody watching this video is too. So um, I'm going to leave the link to book with you in the description box. So if you're interested in becoming a software engineer, and uh, if you're interested in beginning a career in IT, I'm going to leave the link to contact Kingsley in the description box of this video. So do work well to click on that link so that you can have access to him and his courses and start making money. Guys, that money is the motivation and I'm sure you all agree with me. So Kingsley, thank you so much. 
Thank you, Dirty. Thank you so much for having me. And I uh, love and um, follow your channel. It's an incredible channel. Anyone who is watching this should subscribe. It's great content. Absolutely. Yeah, so guys, please subscribe. Do you have final words for us before we go? So my only word is really just, you know, um, know what you don't know. Um, research for yourself, look into the market, see what's going on and take action. All right. Take action, guys. Take action. After this video, I'm definitely going to contact Kintley and take action. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. We've come to the end. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't. And follow me on social media. All my handles are in the description box. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.